Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about technologies and things to learn after you have learned programming. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what are some technologies apart from programming that a developer should learn? And the short answer is there's a, there's a ton of stuff to learn, but I would say that the most important things for you to learn would be to learn how to use a database and how to work with the contain containers such as Docker and so forth and learn how to work with infrastructure or the cloud solutions. Let me explain. So I will put to you like this, that the list of things that you could possibly find useful outside of learning how to use your own stack, depending on what programming language you learn, of course. I'm just going to assume that when we say programming in the context of web, we are talking about that you now have a fairly good understanding of how to write a backend service of some sort in some programming language. You have a understanding of how to represent the data that you have on a web page or something like that. You don't have to be a front end developer, you just know how the web in essence works. So if that is the scope, and I'll tell you right now, that's actually where most of programmers stay. You may think, and this is something that is very erroneous, it's something that is a lie of the internet, that developers on average know more than this. But the reality is actually that this is kind of where the term application developer comes from. And most developers are application developers. And as you know, the thing that I try to push on this little hobby channel of mine is the idea of what is the amount that you need to learn in order to be ready to take a professional developer job. But if you want to push further, you can, and there are people who are going further than this. I'm just saying that this for most people is pretty much good enough, depending on your company, yes, of course. But then there are technologies that are, it's like the second best thing right after. Now a database, I will say, I, it's a little bit on the line because you can't really be an application developer without understanding a database. So maybe we should group that together. So I'm just saying that a database is critical pretty much. You can't survive without it. But it's not necessarily programming related. So I hope that you understand my reasoning there, why I didn't say that, I, that, why I'm not grouping it together. But for all intents and purposes, yes, a database is needed. Now, containers such as Docker, for example, has grown to a popularity level where it together with Kubernetes is is very quickly becoming one of the most common ways of managing your application architecture. Now, the reason why you should learn this is not necessarily because you are going to need it on a daily basis, but in some cases you actually work in a company where this is part of your everyday life. Kubernetes, as an example, is a very powerful and very useful tool depending on the company that you work in. Now, if you are a pure, a purebred application developer and you don't have an interest in going outside of your your application, then it may not be so necessary for you, but you should be aware of that it's a massively popular tool. It is, I'm not saying taking over, but the adoption rate of Docker and Kubernetes is so massive that it used to be the case that we actually had quite a lot of other provisioning tools and infrastructure management tools. And we still do have them like Puppet, Ansible, Chef, Salt. There are probably a few others, but those are the four big ones that I can think of, which, I mean, learning these, there's, that's still really useful, but on average, the odds of you using that, having a return on investment on learning those things, as opposed to learning, say, Docker, is, well, I'm not gonna say this or that about it, but it, it has grown to the point now that most people actually think of Docker as part of stuff you should know. So it's definitely a very good investment for you. Apart from that, I would say that having a look at how to deal with cloud solutions, that's also a massively good investment. If you learn how to use the services provided to us by say Azure, Google or um, 
Amazon, you'll pretty much be set. That is, I would say, as far as you have to go as a full, well, as a developer. I would say that you don't have to go further than that. Because once you learn how to use the database and you know how to use containerization and so forth, and you know how to use the services in, in the cloud, then pretty much everything that you need to know in order to run a, a successful, and I'm not joking, a multi-million dollar company or even multi-billion dollar company, it's, uh, then you have all of that. Because that is, the stack that I just described to you is for most intent and purposes, apart from like really specialized companies who do something extremely niched or something extremely out there, this is what everybody is using, or these are the, all the parts that make up your application. I mean, you can, of course, break it down and talk about load balancers and, and message queues and all of this other stuff as well, which is definitely relevant, but I kind of cheated here and just put that under knowledge about, the, you know, about cloud solutions. It might not be a hundred percent accurate because I can also sit here and I can say that I tell you that oh you should learn Kafka or you should use a Rabbit MQ or Active MQ or whichever Q system you want. But at the same time, you have PubSub on GCP and then you have uh, the message system of Amazon that could do the same sort of thing. So it kind of becomes hard for me to break down every single one of these pieces and say that oh no you should favor that one or that one because I don't want to get you to a, a mindset where, oh, you should learn that tool or that tool unless it's strictly necessary because I want to keep it a little bit open. I just want you to know that an exception would be Docker because the containers and Docker specifically is probably something that you should favor over other containerization solutions. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you're looking for things to learn outside of programming, just application development, the first and foremost thing you should prioritize is to learn the different types of databases that are out there. There, there are many types of databases and they all have different use cases and so forth. Some of them are used in pretty much every, every project and some are less used but have projects where they really, really shine. So that's the first natural thing for you to focus on to just figure out how all this works because it's the closest thing that will give you an enormous return on investment as a software developer. Now, after that, learning about containerization and Docker and so forth and Kubernetes and orchestration with containers is, I would say, probably an even f one step even further than that, where the techno that technology is so well established at this point that it is increasingly coming to the point where most companies are using it. I'm not saying that all are, but is going in that direction right now. And then lastly, cloud and infrastructure, how to use the different services. Now you don't have to be a master of everything cloud related, but it is the, I would say it's the outer sphere of all the things that you could possibly want to do on the web for most intent and purposes. And I'm not joking when I say this is a massive undertaking, it will take time, but once you have that down, then you pretty much have the entire stack under your belt. And there is not really anything that I can think of that you couldn't do on the web, because now we've basically covered all of the main technologies that make up a successful multi-million or multi-billion dollar company, apart of course from highly specialized uh, concepts, but we're talking about technology, and in terms of technology, you're pretty much set. Have a great day.